1077 The Bronx and 1077 thebronxcom live from the Clarence Public House Studios. That's a phrase I have to say at least once a week. I don't know. Depends on if I'm doing if I'm doing someone else's show with them. Uh, but yeah, that's a phrase I have to say whenever I'm doing my radio show. You can listen to on Monday nights. But um, thing is that someone came up to me and thought, uh, well, they thought they would tell me that the radio industry is dying, that and maybe I should consider changing my major. And that was a friend I was gonna off whose music I was gonna offer to play during my show, but uh, since then I have said no. But um, no, uh, I think the radio industry is still going on. It's still going strong. That's what I'm here to tell you about, uh, because I'm very passionate about the radio, and um, I don't think that I think people still listen to it more often than than they realize. So I'm here to tell you why it's not dead. It's changing through by comparing it to other me other famous media out there. And uh, when and telling you about when it is that you listen, because that you don't realize you're listening. So one thing I'm going to compare to, um, I'm going to tell you that uh, uh, by looking at Digiday.com, that it is currently still the fastest growing um, uh, form of media. People are still listening to this all the time. The radio, you in your car, on your phone, anywhere. Like just or even like if it's a like a local event somewhere at your local shop, right or something. I don't know. We could be broadcasting anywhere. Uh, according to DJO.com, network radio is one is the one place radio acts like television. It's so it's cool. It's a cool yeah. It's a cool audience to look at because everyone in the U.S. is listening to similar content. They're all listening to the same thing. It's not different. We're all just getting the same information. Everyone's listening in. I mean, it's like I mean, television does that too, of course. But radio has more potential also for it to be real. It could be there could be mistakes and you can hear them. You could talk about them. Like, did you feel like anything that you've seen? Maybe um, I'm forgetting his name. Oh, um, I can't remember his name. Howard something. Uh, Howard Stern. Yes, Howard Stern says so many different things all the time on the radio. And he's he's done so many illegal stuff or that uh, the radio that and so he's been under so much controversy. But you only get that really with radio, because I mean you could somehow quickly press the delete button, uh, but it doesn't always work. It doesn't get everything. Corn also, there's also have some statistics from DiamondbackOnline.com. Stats that have tabulated across 46 networks during an average week found that a whopping 72.5% of females aged 18 to 21 in the U.S. are heard are heard a network radio commercial during the hours of 5 a.m. and midnight in an average week. 67% of males in that age group also heard it. Gen generationally, ratio seems to be attractive to many different age groups. 51 million um, of Americans aged 18 to 34 listen to radar networks every week, with about 53% of them being males. About 44 million Gen Xers have heard, about, have heard a network radio ad this week, while 43 million boomers st tuned in as well. Um, to see, actually, also, I have a, a personal chart here about um, audience by age and the largest age ratio is people of the age 45 to 54. Um, and then it just go, uh, that's about 20% of people, usually. Um, it grew, it just, and, but really, from people from teenagers age 12 to 17, it just keeps going up on who's listening to the radio, who's listening to radio. And that relates now to my next topic, which is time of listening, because but when you're a teenager, at one point, you're gonna gain a car, most likely. Which, and there's many day parts. How many, how often is you're gonna listen and so the most popular, because let's be honest, you're gonna listen in in the morning because you're too lazy mainly to plug in the little thing, to plug in the little piece that plugs in your iPod, and then you have to turn it on because you're tired. You have to go re get ready for school. You have to get ready for work maybe. It's, um, that's in the morning. The morning is only actually the second most popular listening hour, listening percentage. That morning is, by the way, from is a 5 a.m. time to 10 a.m. People are li and but the most popular. Um, Day part in which you listen to, to radio is um, is basically um, the three is the late afternoon net hour, which is the hours between 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. And why is that? Because you're most likely trying to get home from work or school and stuff, wherever you live or wherever you're doing during the day because traffic. We're all listening for traffic. You're like, is there an accident on the parkway? Is there an accident on an accident on Route 22? Is there some way, other way I should take to get home? But and the best way to find that radio, you listen to your radio. Um, the just then goes from there for the midday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. 
to the evening of 7 a.m. to 12 a.m. And then the least listened to at time uh, day part is the 12 a.m. to 5 a.m. Uh, yes. So um, th literally, yeah, the, you're, the, you're most likely listening. Um, yes. Um, these, the radio is still not is definitely not dead. You could li there's millions of people still listening. You know you're listening, even though you say you're, you're not. I mean, you have your iPods, you have such, but you would want. But the radio is still here. It's not going to go away. It's not. It's not dead. It's de definitely not dead. Um, you could listen. I, one of the things I'd encourage you all, of course, is to listen to my to my radio show, J Rock, this evening. Listening to the best, hit, biggest hits and best variety, 1077 The Bronx and 1077 thebronxcom